Hi, I'm Paul, and I am not a gold bug. My coffee maker broke today. So it's time for a rant on inflation, quality, and why some things and why some goods are cheap and other things and other goods are not. That's right. Let's get right into it today because I haven't had my coffee today. Now, I am drinking tea. I'm drinking some black tea. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Black tea is good. I like black tea. I prefer coffee. And I actually prefer Café El Morro because it is uh, delicious. It's cheap. It's inexpensive. And it's very strong coffee. If you've never tried it, I highly recommend it. And it's durable. If you want to talk about investing and saving on the cheap, go watch my video where there's a thumbnail of this and a bar of sote soap. But, uh, yeah, I've been drinking this stuff for a while now, and I'm going to be drinking this stuff for a while to come. And it's delicious, and I love it. But I can't drink it today because here's my coffee maker, and my coffee maker broke. Now, this is a Black & Decker coffee maker, and it's still got the water in it. i got to dump the water out and then just throw this thing away. But it brings up some interesting points about the economy. Remember, this is a lifestyle channel where I share my experiences in life and I relate them to the markets and in the economy. That's what I do. So today we're talking about just quality, inflation. We're talking about coffee makers. We're talking about a lot of things really because, you know, coffee makers are one of those items that just break. They just break. Coffee makers, toasters, vacuum cleaners, and kettles for like boiling water. Those things break all the time. All the time. We're always replacing these things every couple of years. And this is my first point. My first point is on quality. Now, when it comes to a coffee maker, I don't think that a person needs to buy a quality coffee maker because they're going to break. This is my experience, right? We've bought the fancy Cuisinart coffee makers, um, the, the Keurig coffee makers that, you know, the, the saying is if it if it ain't broke, it doesn't have enough features or something like that. And that's true, right? That's true, right? Like all these high feature full coffee makers in the long run, they're just expensive and they're overpriced and the durability is arguably the same. And in my experience is the same. So whether you're buying a fancy Cuisinart coffee maker or whatever, or you're just buying a cheap Black & Decker coffee maker, they're going to last approximately the same amount of time. So just go with the cheap one. Just go with the cheap one because the end result is the same. It is the drip function and they all just have the general basket or whatever. I still got the coffee in here, right? I still got the coffee in the basket in here. Just use these little paper baskets. These paper baskets are cheap. The coffee is cheap and i prefer that over the pod style because when i drink coffee you know sure you can get the double ones but remember the whole if it ain't broke it doesn't have enough features you don't need a fancy coffee maker filters cheap coffee and it's all good right it all depends on how much water you use in relation to how much coffee you use and what kind of a grind that coffee is and what kind of a roast that coffee is right these are the things that matter when it comes to coffee not the machine that it's going through so my first point is that when it comes to an item like a coffee maker, you don't need to worry about quality. But but it's also interesting because on some household items, quality can in fact matter. For example, this is a Vitamix. This is an old school Vitamix. This is a 5200. And I don't know like what model they're on now or anything, but we bought this thing probably in like 2010, right? And it's like 12 years old and we literally use it at least five times a week, maybe every single day. Um, and it's held up for 12 years and it's quality, right? There's a difference between the way a Vitamix liquefies, blends, let me say blends. There's a difference between the way a Vitamix blends and the way a cheap blender blends. There really is. But so this is an example of paying up for quality for a noticeable difference. But the end result is the blend. Now, when it comes to coffee, the end result is your water and your be and your coffee that you're using. That's basically it, right? Because the, 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 the concept of brewing the coffee in and of itself is the same. Now, I'm bringing this up today also because I want to kind of talk about inflation and why the price of coffee makers basically doesn't really go up. I'm looking at walmart.com and the cheapest coffee maker that they have that's 12 cups is the brand Mainstays. And it's $12.87 for a basic coffee maker, right? There's been like zero inflation when it comes to coffee makers. And there's a reason for that. And as a matter of fact, there's probably been deflation if you think about it. But 
I actually went with a programmable mainstays. I've never had a mainstays brand coffee maker, but it's not like, not even like Cuisinart and all these other KitchenAid and all these other fancy brands. They're all made in China too. So it's not like you're really buying quality stuff. You're just buying Chinese made semi-durable goods that last a few years and break and then you replace them. Same thing with vacuum cleaners, right? We buy like the $150 shark vacuum cleaner every few years because the thing will break after a few years, maybe five years. You know, maybe that's the lifespan of a vacuum cleaner. Uh, probably not even five years. So I think we're on the second vacuum cleaner since we bought this house. Going off on a side tangent, but that just proves the point. If it's something that breaks frequently, coffee makers, toasters, kettles, and vacuum cleaners, just buy the cheap one and replace it because it makes no sense buying the fancy one because the end result is the same. Now, getting back to the coffee maker in particular, why is it that the cheapest coffee maker is still, you know, $12.87? Okay, because it's simple. The government is not involved in coffee maker regulation. I don't know how much coffee maker I don't know how much coffee maker regulation there even is. There might be something in California and then all the manufacturers pander to the lowest common denominator which is California where every once in a while there'll be some sort of like spec that California requires on their consumer laws. But other than that, and maybe some disclaimers, there's probably some disclaimers on there. So, you know, they've had to etch this says, caution, hot, read instructions, blah, blah, blah. So this is probably like, you know, the result of, of being sued in the justice, in the, in, the, in, the, in the legal system. So you got all these disclaimers now, which increase the cost a little bit. But in general, there's not the kind of heavy, heavy regulation on what's mandated in a coffee maker. So this is why there is no coffee maker inflation to speak of, really. Now... Think about the opposite, okay? Because basically the government can get in the way or get out of the way. That's it, right? That's what the government does. They get in the way or they get out of the way. So think about what the government regulates very heavily. Think about healthcare. How much does healthcare cost? Well, you know, if you're rich, it doesn't matter. And if you're poor, it doesn't matter, right? Because you're not paying for it if you're poor. And if you're rich, then it doesn't matter anyway, if you're in the middle class, then yeah, it's a freaking nightmare. A freaking nightmare. It really is. And that's because government, heavy handed government's involved in healthcare. What about housing, right? How much is a house? Look at all the regulation with housing. Heavy handed government's in that too. If you're rich, doesn't matter, right? Because technically you can only live in one place. I mean, I guess you could have multiple houses, which people do. But for needs, you only need one place to live. Because you can only live at one place at a time, right? Um, and if you're poor, yeah, you're good too, right? Right? So, so again, the middle class. Bohica. Bohica middle class. So, healthcare housing. What about education, right? Oh, half dollars paying for the University of Toledo on the fly. Thank goodness we still got two more years before my daughter starts going. There's going to be some overlap with two kids in college simultaneously. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But it's the heavy hand of government, right? In fact, it kind of is government because it's a public university, right? It's the essence of government in and of itself. So um, everything that the government puts its hand on and regulates, inflation is just out of control. Oh, but half dollar, those are concepts. Healthcare is a concept. It's not really one specific thing. Housing is a concept. It's not really one specific thing. Education is a concept. It's not really one specific thing. Okay. Well, how about automobiles? How about automobiles? Cars and trucks. Everybody wants to talk about like mm, ah, they want to talk about like the microchip shortages. What a scam. What convenient excuse. What a convenient cover. I need to do a video about the various myths related to the microchip shortage that everybody still to this day will talk about. It's unbelievable, really. Sleazy car salesman, anyway. I don't know who else is talking about microchip shortages. I don't think anybody else really is at this point, except for sleazy car salesmen. But, yeah. 
<laughs> it's not microchip shortages. It's not because the other thing is think about the cost of technology over time, right? Technology over time improves and cost comes down. It does. My first laptop in 1997 was an IBM ThinkPad. And I don't even remember the specs. I do remember that it ran Windows 98, but I can't remember if it was second edition or just Windows 98. But uh, I bought it in 1997. It was an IBM ThinkPad, and that thing cost $3,700. $3,700 for that laptop in 1977. No need to go to the BLS inflation calculator. It's an interesting tool for looking at how the government underestimates by policy inflation statistics. But yeah, see, microchips go down over time, right? That's what they do. Technology costs less over time. That's what it does. And it also improves over time. Um, think about like plasma televisions. When they first came out, those things were like more than the vehicles I was driving at the time, like 10 grand for a plasma TV. And now we're not even using plasma TVs, really. Now we're using LCDs and LEDs and stuff like that. And it's a different technology in and of itself. But, all right, so yeah, the microchip shortage. Um, and then what's the other thing? Oh, like labor and just the cost of steel and raw goods and blah, 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 blah. No one ever talks about the heavy hand of government regulation in automobile manufacturing, do they? Do they? Automobiles are heavily menu regulated, right? Right? Why are so many vehicles not for sale and not available for sale in the United States? Why are there different automobile markets? Because governments around the world regulate automobiles. And let me go off on a side tangent here for a minute. Because like the Europeans think they're cool. <laughs> Oh, this is great. The European, I don't know if it's the European Union, which is interesting. It's just like another level of bureaucracy. But something in Europe is mandating, I guess, USB-C as the universal standard for cell phones. And everybody's like, oh, this is a great thing. This is a great thing. It's not a great thing, right? It's not, oh, because now it's going to create an industry standard. No, no, no. It's going to retard Research and development and growth is what it's going to do by mandating that all cell phones must be USB-C. What if they would have done this hoopla back in the day when it was USB-1? <laughs> USB-1. Good thing they didn't get smart back then. Because you see, when you force the regulation, you retard the growth. You retard the innovation. You retard the research. You retard the development. That's what you're doing. But that's a side tangent on just people thinking that it's great. All this regulation is great when it's really not. What's that? What that's going to do is stifle innovation is what mandating USB-C as the standard for cell phones is going to do. Right? The industry will take care of the standards, whether something wants to be standardized or not. And... Individual companies can choose whether they want to adopt that standard or whether they want to be proprietary. And then at the end of the day, market participants, as in people buying the stuff, are going to determine whether they're willing to put up with the proprietary nonsense or whether they're willing to go with something that's standardized. Right? Which is one of the reasons why Samsung, I believe, was able to surge to the popularity that it is. Because when we bought our first Samsung product in 2005, it was a Samsung digital camera. And it didn't have a lot of this proprietary nonsense that stuff like Kodak and, and Sony and all these other companies were doing. And who's one of the dominating electronics manufacturers now? Samsung is. Samsung is. But going off on way too many side tangents, here's the other point, right? Like, I have some notes here. So my coffee maker broke. Uh, sometimes paying for quality is good, such as the case of the Vitamix. With coffee makers, toasters, and vacuum cleaners, it really doesn't matter, folks. Coffee makers are still cheap because there's not the heavy hand of government regulation. So, so here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. And it's like talking about the free markets. Ooh, that's such an evil thing, the free market. So I bought a coffee maker this morning. And I went to walmart.com. And here's what I bought. I bought three 15-ounce 
100% lime juice bottles. I bought one three ounce bacon flavored bits, as in the TVP, the crunchy ones, because I like those better than the soft real bacon bits. I bought a 16 ounce bottle of French dressing. I bought a three pound bag of yellow onions. I bought a 10 pound bag of russet tomatoes. I bought three 24 ounce tubs of sour cream. I bought a 12 cup programmable coffee maker. Mainstays 12 cup programmable coffee maker, 1.8 liter capacity black. That's what I bought. It was 1986. So I didn't buy the absolute cheapest one because every once in a blue moon, we like to use the program feature. Although I'm thinking that I probably should have actually bought the cheaper one without the programming features because that's just another thing that can break. But then again, they didn't have the cheap, cheap one in black and the black matches the, I don't know. But then again, I also have some white appliances, it looks like, and some plain stainless steel. Oh my gosh, my life is such a mess, folks. But I also bought six bananas. I also bought six bananas. And I put a $4.50 tip on it. And the total is $52. So I bought all of that stuff for $52, and it's going to be dropped off on my doorstep between 12 and 1 p.m. today. So this is the thing, right? Like, if you're just starting out in life and you haven't bought coffee makers yet, just buy the cheap coffee maker. It really doesn't matter because they all last the same anyway. If you are frustrated and don't understand why everything's going up in price, a lot of it has to do with the government's involvement. Everything is overregulated. We don't need more regulation. We need less regulation. We don't need more laws. We need less laws. We don't need more restriction. We need more freedom and liberty. This is the problem. Things are only going to get worse. And I have to go and I have to say it again. But the issue, the essence of all of the problems in the entire world come down to gold and silver. They really do. We don't have honest money, so we can't have an honest society. We can only have a dishonest society. Thank goodness the government is not involved in heavy coffee maker regulation. Thank goodness... Coffee maker manufacturing is not a heavily regulated industry. But it's just another dimension to inflation. It's just another aspect of inflation. And it's funny too because the government will be very, very quick to blame. Like, oh, Putin's the reason for inflation. Or this thing is the reason for inflation. Or that thing is the reason for inflation. But, you know, what's the saying about glass houses, stones and glass houses, stones and glass houses and throwing stuff around or look in the mirror. Pick, pick your favorite expression du jour and it's all equally appropriate. So that's just something to think about. Not only is the government a major contributing factor to the inflation, to the price inflation, but on the flip side to that, they also, by way of policy, explicit and implicit, official and unofficial. I wrote about this many times for years too. I got an interesting comment yesterday when I did a video about Starfield and the comment was something to the effect of, show me your resources and, and your sources on this. I've written about this stuff for years, folks, for years. Go to archive.org and look up Silver Doctors and under the pen name Half Dollar are all my articles, except for the ones that have been scrubbed. I'm sure some have been scrubbed. And, I mean, this is not a debate. This is not some Looney Tunes theory. No. Price inflation is understated by way of policy. And I'll do some more videos on that, but it's just to show that we can still have dirt cheap coffee makers in 2023. I can buy a 12 cup coffee maker for under $13 if I want to. So not going to go over 20 minutes. Just wanted to come out and rant because my coffee maker broke and I haven't had my coffee and now I'm kind of feeling frustrated. But yeah, that's all I got for you today. Thank you for your time.